Dr. Violet Makuku, the Higher Education Quality Assurance Expert and the Harmonization of African Higher Education Quality Assurance and Accreditation Officer at the Association of African Universities. Uh, our topic of discussion is uh, diversification, differentiation, harmonization, and accreditation of African higher education. But before we delve into our topic, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce the panelists to you. Uh, we have uh, the chairman, who is going to be Professor Nicholas Nsoma uh, uh, Nuyama, uh, Vice President of the Association of African Universities and the President of Regent Universities. Welcome, Prof. Thank you. With us here also is um, uh, uh, Dr. Josiah Koba, Lawe Vice President, Open University, Accra, Ghana. Welcome. So we also have um, <coughs> Prof. Uh, I will not uh, uh, do it in any order because uh, uh, it's just a... Uh, Prof. Elamini Osmani Said Amid Mohamed, Vice President, the National University of Sudan. <coughs> we also have uh, uh, Prof. Zisi Smile, Vice Chancellor, Koforodia Technical University, the only woman in the uh, panel, and in most cases, <laughs> it's one thing that uh, as a higher education, we need to balance. Uh, we have uh, Professor Clemens Jidonu, uh, Accra Institute of uh, Technology, right at the end, close to our television set. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take this time uh, to call upon the chairperson of this session, to say a few words before we really get into our topic. I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the topic as we see it is... Um, is it on? Is it on? Okay. Hello? Is... Uh, are you sure? Is, uh, is it, is, do you hear me from there? Hello? No, I don't think it's working. It's not working. Hello? Okay, maybe I'll, I'll shout. Uh, maybe I'll shout. Uh, it's um, diversification, differentiation, harmonization, and accreditation of African higher education. And uh, if you combine the first three, diversification, differentiation, and harmonization, it simply, uh, simply means let us agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. So we, that's we have the diversification. And we have uh, differentiation, then harmonization. <laughs> and uh, um, in African tertiary institutions, uh, there is one thing which is certain. And that is the, the differentiation between uh, technical universities and traditional universities. That is there. There's also differentiation between public universities and private universities. And uh, if we don't manage these two systems properly, um, we are going to be in trouble. Because um, when you go to other places, other continents, there are special universities which are meant to do special things. So we go to Malaysia, we have what you call research universities. That's the, that's the differentiation we are talking about. So they rather take more postgraduate uh, students than undergraduate students. Um, when you come to Ghana and some African, African countries, uh, Instead of doing that, we still, even when you have a good university, a well-known university like University of Ghana, KN University, they, all those traditional universities will still go down and take a lot of first degree, bachelor degree students. They will take even diploma 
uh, students. And that does not uh, go well for the, uh, the continent because you should try and differentiate between uh, research universities and uh, other technical universities or uh, other uh, private uh, universities. And so that is why I'm so excited that we have these eminent uh, scholars here, knowledgeable in this area, that we are going to uh, tease them to come out with their views on this aspect of the topic. So ladies and gentlemen, um, let me say that I'm happy to chair this session. And you all contribute and ask pertinent questions as the, uh, the, 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 the program goes by. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof, uh, for introducing uh, this uh, session. Um, allow me also to uh, recognize the presence of uh, Professor Kobina Yangson, former Pro Vice Chancellor. Education offer to you, panelists. Well, I guess my understanding is that um, not all universities or all institutions of higher education are required to be the same. Mm -hmm. That we should expect that y different institutions may have different missions visions of what they want to achieve. But having said that, um, then we have a need to harmonize and to make sure that we can coexist and all of us contribute to uh, national development. Um, that is how I see it. And I think this is important, especially when we're dealing with accreditation. Mm -hmm. Um, that's yes. Thank you very much. Any additions? Well, uh, as the chairman said, um, there are different categories of universities. Mm -hmm. As when you are looking at uh, universities in terms of uh, differentiation, um, you talk about private universities, public universities, uh, but you can also at universities that traditionally are set up for uh, with a particular focus. Hello. So you can have liberal arts Hello. universities. You can have, you know, uh, uh, universities with uh, with agriculture focus. Universities with education focus. Universities uh, focusing on he health, medicine. Uh, and so on. You know, you can have universities uh, focusing on business. So with respect to differentiation, you can have different types of universities based on the focus uh, upon which, you know, they, they, they were set up. You, know, you can have education, um, like University of Education at Winneba, uh, formerly University of Cape Coast, initially set up as an education university. You know, so with a different or with a specific focus. But when you come to uh, diversification, once the university is set up, and universities are supposed to provide the middle and high level manpower to drive national development. And since the uh, objectives or the developmental agenda of various nations keep changing, the dynamic. Universities are also supposed to be dynamic. And so as time goes on, they have to diversify in order to address the developmental needs of the uh, nations which they serve. 
But while diversifying, you have to be careful uh, so that you do not go beyond certain bounds. That's why we have harmonization, you know, uh, harmonization um, in terms of the academic practices so that we all move within harmony, you know, so that we pave the way for transfer of credits of students, pave the way for mobilization of both students and, and, and staff, you know, and that's where accreditation comes in. You know, accreditation will make sure that we uphold uh, uniformly high standards so that the graduates that we produce will fit in everywhere. In these days where we have globalization, uh, we are producing students for the global market. And so uh, we have to harmonize our activities and accreditation should be there to make sure that we conform with certain uh, standards. Uh, thank you very much for the contribution. I think uh, that is well said, but I want to reiterate what uh, the chairman has said, that uh, let's not forget also the levels, because we have uh, the functionalist perspective, which tells us that everyone has got a function. So we can't all be PhD holders or degree holders. So we need, uh, we need people also with certificates, diplomas, uh, degrees and uh, masters and PhDs, again, these different levels of differentiation should also be there in order to cater for the uh, skill sets that are needed within the different countries. Having said that, we want to uh, get deeper into understanding that uh, earlier on, in 1981, there was the Arusha Convention of 1981 which was about uh, recognizing qualifications. It's not a thing that started now. And the time they met, there were issues that are there, that were there. And now moving on, it was renewed to be the Addis Convention of 2014. It's still we, uh, intending to address the same issues. In 1981, there were 33 ministers of higher education who then are set to uh, address the key issues. But let's hear from our panelists. What are the e key issues that would lead us into finding us in a position to take harmonization and accreditation of African higher education as a key aspect of higher education in Africa? Uh, let's move on to those who haven't said anything yet. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we have made a point very, very clear that the first one, we all need to acknowledge the fact that one road will not help us or one level of training will not help us. Public alone cannot do it. We need a diversification that has been well established. So after the acknowledgement, this is very, very important that we must have a framework within which to work. We can't just say that we need quality education or we are all helping to uh, educate the youth, so it should be done anyhow. That will not help us as a continent or a country or our level of education, but we really need to have the framework. That's very, very key from the national level to the regulatory bodies down to the institutional level. We must make sure that quality is assured in all the aspects, the curriculum, the courses, the pedagogy, the faculty, whatever level, we need a framework to work within. So that's what I want. Thank you very much. Well, I think uh, uh, we already know that the human capital is a key resource for competitiveness of the nations. So we are talking about our young people. We in Africa, we need to expand in higher education. But this expansion might end up in establishing uh, institutions that do not, do not meet the minimum, sta minimum standards. So the steps for harmonization is by developing standards, agree on it, then we uh, create a body that can 
assess uh, degree of implementation of these standards. And this body could do what we call now the accreditation. The accreditation uh, is a first step for harmonization. If you don't have uh, uh, common standards acceptable for all, so that you can do credit transfer, so that you can uh, uh, move a student from one institute to another or a staff from, you will not be able to harmonize them. So the first step is uh, developing standards and a body for accreditation. That's what I think. Thank you very much. Uh, let's say uh, if uh, Professor Jidonu and then we move on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, let me go back to the issue of uh, this concept of diversification, differentiation, and uh, immunization, and of course, aggregation. I personally mm -hmm. battle with these concepts before coming here. When you talk about that education, you talk about different things. When you talk about differentiation, you also talk about different things. I got an answer only a while ago when the ladies were dancing. <laughs> <laughs> the two ladies are two different ladies. That's differentiation. They were dancing in a diverse way. Okay? Although they were listening to the same tune, they were dancing and turning in different directions in a diverse ways. But they were dancing and listening to a harmonization instrument, which is the, the, the music down there, mm. which is trying its best to harmonize them. <laughs> so I thought that is the answer to the question of whether <laughs> differentiation, harmonization, or difference. On the issue of difference, accreditation is quite straightforward issue. Uh, on the issue of the difference, uh, differentiation, I think I do agree with uh, Professor NNN. Is it triple N or four N? Where is it? Five. Five N's. His name is full of N's. Good friend of mine. You can look at the institutional differences in terms of whether it's a purely research based university or teaching university, and for that matter, entrepreneurial university. We don't have that kind of differentiation in our part of the world. You can also examine the differentiation in terms of ranking, the quality. I know the, the, the Vice Chancellor of Legon was complaining recently that they put us all in one pot, but they, they feature on their what? The Times uh, rankings. So not all universities are the same. We are different. Probably that's the level of differentiation he's talking about. Diversification for me is a bigger thing. Diversification, for me, the anchor for the diversification is what we deliver, the programs. So you can look at institutional diversification within institution diversification, whereby a particular institution is offering diversified programs. Okay, not only doing business or engineering for that matter. It looks as if our university, most of our university, the public university, are reasonably diverse in terms of program offerings. Mm -hmm. But a private university, given their size and limited resources, they are a little bit not very diversified within the institutions. We can talk about inter-institutional diversity. Remember, when the first two universities of Ghana universities in Ghana, we had Legon, which was focused on the humanities. Is that correct? Humanities. And the KN University came out and focused on what? The science and engineering. So the inter-university diversity, uh, diversification exists. When one is focusing on something, the other is focusing on something. But there were not a lot of diversification within Legon and for that matter, KNUST during the beginning. They were monolithic kind of institutions. So you can have uh, within institution diversity, 
doesn't mean that we have entire university diversity. So basically now, in a private university in Ghana, one of the issues is they don't have within university diversity in terms of the program offering. That's why accreditation board requests that. And the entire university diversity between the private university also doesn't exist. Most of them are offering what? The same type of programs. That is the perspective in which I understood the concept of diversity. On the issue of normaliz it is in normalization, harmonization, I think we can look at it in terms of through academic collaborations and international corporations. You can do that. You can also look at the level and the scope of harmonization in terms of input, process, and output. The input, uh, you can harmonize at the curriculum level. Yeah, you can do that. You can harmonize at the process level in terms of the instructional method that approach that you used. And of course, you can harmonize in terms of the output, that's the qualification, the national qualification framework. And it's very interesting that I will Professor Janka's presentation. He did allude that there is an African regional network which is up and, up and going to try to form, provide a network for harmonization of qualifications and so forth. So I think on the harmonization side, there are various areas that we want to look at and see whether we are there or whether we've started at all. Thank you very much uh, for the contribution. Uh, if I understand it well from uh, the panelists, I realize that uh, in terms of uh, diversification and differentiation, we are doing relatively well. But uh, let's look at uh, harmonization and accreditation. In, I want to ask you about, uh, uh, let's just uh, take one by one uh, these things uh, in particular which we should harmonize. And how do you think we can start, for example, in a country like Ghana? Where do we start from? Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Anybody can take it. <laughs> okay. I, hello. Oh. I, I, uh, <coughs> I have a... Is it? Hello. Hello. I'd like to raise what I see as a very fundamental issue with how accreditation approaches all these matters that we are talking about, you know, whether it's harmonization, differentiation. Um, before I got into the business of accreditation, what I was used to, what I thought was accreditation, is that you set up an institution or you design some curriculum you have a concept in mind. You come to a regulatory body, they say, tell us what you want to do. And then the, that body holds you responsible for delivering what you are trying to do. I think we have to be careful. In my view, what accreditation has become, at least what I've become used to, is that you, to get your program accredited, you essentially have to mimic what already exists. And I want to repeat that. What is happening is that you have subject experts, um, university administrators, university professionals who have done things in a certain way for a long time. They come and visit you and they insist that you do things the same way they've been doing it. I think that our accreditation system now, instead of improving upon our diversity and, and differentiation and harmonizing us, all of us towards a national goal, we are just creating and recreating what already exists. It is very difficult, for example, to design an interdisciplinary program within a university right now, because the accreditation visitors will most certainly dilute what you are trying to do. So that when you are, you are trying to do open learning like we are, 
which goes beyond simply distance learning. And for example, involving a student in the creation of their program. You know, you want to do entrepreneurial education where students, for example, create value through their program, where you want to bring together a faculty of economics and, and engineering and all that, and pick and choose and put something together that addresses a particular educational challenge that the student wants to confront. It's very difficult because you will not get it through accreditation. The reason is that we want to recreate the Legons and the Cape Coast universities. And when you have any of us who have been through an accreditation visit, you know, trying to get a program accredited, the frustration is so much. So I think that is an issue that we need to address in terms of really, not all universities will be research universities. Not all of us want to recreate another department of economics and a department of, of, uh, of uh, sociology and mix and, and have all the degree programs look the same, you know. So even issues of, of progression, what you take before what, is an issue that can have your, 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 your uh, program um, unapproved. And you have to go back. And at the end of the day, when you're finished, your program looks exactly like what I did at Legon in the 1970s. And I think it, it's killing in, in innovation. And what we really need now is some, some disruptive innovation mm -hmm. which will uh, enable us to, to open up learning and do something different. Still do things that really um, um, confront the different issues we are dealing with within this century. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, if I pick Dim well, I think uh, there's an issue one of uh, involving the, the young ones, uh, which goes on to match with our theme. If we have the old professors, there are two reasons why we need also to involve maybe the young lecturers and our students, because what they have now can actually add value and give another dimension. And then he talked also about a multidisciplinary approach, if I were to summarize, because that's when he was saying, let's take engineering, let's take what. This is also the talk of the day, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, there's a time when we need to mix these disciplines in order to resolve our socioeconomic problems. Thank you, Prof, for that contribution. Can we have more contributions? I saw a yeah. end up there regarding the same uh, issue that I asked earlier on. Thank I you. I can. What is happening with your microphone? 